welcome to Dwarf Fortress Tutorial, Part 3. Uh, this is Onigato again, and we're going to be covering a couple more concepts today. Uh, finish up the, some of the projects here that we've got started, like the cistern here, which is coming along nicely. We have, what, three, maybe four more levels to go down, which is nice. Uh, we're going to get... Uh, some security started because let's face it this is very open and there are some nasty things that are just outside and that's not good and get uh, workshops and a couple other things set up so that we can have you know production going on for some very important things if you remember from last time we set up the beds and we had a basic stockpile set up We'll improve on that in a little while, but for now, let's just get back into it. We're going to let things run. Come on, there we go. And we're hitting some interesting rock down here. Brown zircon. Oh, that'll be a nice gem. We'll get that uh, eventually. Be able to use that. to add sound sense. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but I will, and it'll help me keep things going for myself. Sound sense is a very good, very useful program that does come with the lazy new packs that are generated, and it just basically produces background sounds and background noise uh, for you. Some background music that's more diverse than the stuff that you get from the toady. And let's see, everything loading. Okay, looks like. Oh, ah, okay. So, typically, let's see, where are we in time? We are 20th hematite, which means we're about midsummer. You sometimes, if you're originating civilization is close enough, we'll get some migrants. And migrants are going are just basically more dwarves. But they are also more mouths to feed, more beds to make, and more people to manage. Which makes life interesting sometimes, so alright. The reason why he's blinking with an X there is he hasn't been welcomed into the fortress properly. No, wait, seriously? Just the two? Okay, I can live with that. That's that's good. Uh, let's see. Where'd they go? Oh, wow, are they almost all? Oh, wow, they are. Okay, so we have... a fisher dwarf and wait really well that's interesting he's a weapons he's a he's a fighter he's a combatant huh does he have any labors turned on he's got the healthcare labors yeah feeding and recovering that everybody gets, and he's got hauling. No skills otherwise, but he is militarily trained. Interesting. Well, let's uh, put him on hunting. Actually, what does he have for inventory? Some trousers, tunic, coat, cloak, cap, hoods, gloves, shoes. He doesn't actually have a weapon. He just has training. Which means he's almost useless because we're not set up to handle a military yet. Joy. They also brought with them, looks like, oops, a Keat. 
switch it to another bird. But this one's male. And Keats are immature. And a stray reindeer calf. So useful. But we'll go ahead and put both of them in the pen or in the pasture. Uh, and that one's a pet. You can tell by the name. Uh, if anything bad happens to this particular Keat, the dwarf whose pet he is will have bad thoughts happen to him. Because, my pet died, oh so sad am I. Any animal can be made into a pet, except cats. Cats don't, you can't turn a cat into a pet. Cats choose to become pets. And they will choose to become pets. Alright, so it's just those two, it looks like. Let's see if we can give them any good labors. What do we got here? Okay. Well, let's first off sort by migration wave. Okay, so this one has those. And Kubik. No. Uh, it does make life a little bit more difficult. Okay. You know what? We're going to make Kubik a Mason. Because we're going to need that in the very not distant future. In fact, we're going to need that pretty much right away. A Mason. Are you connected? Why are you not connected? Date, achievements. Maybe my headset's turned down. No, everything's turned up. Come on. Currently playing. Nothing. Sounds configuration. Everything's loaded. Don't have any pack up. Pack updates and all that. And it's looking in the right place. So. cares. Don't really need it anyways. Okay, so we'll be using the mason here in a very short time. Uh, masonry is the, 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 uh, the labor masonry is used in two things. Working at a mason's shop and putting up walls and other construction of just floors, walls, that kind of thing. So that's going to be useful. Now yeah, these two dwarves are going to come downstairs. Yep. And they're going to come into the main meeting area here. And they're going to be met, probably by that dwarf. And then once they are met, they're going to get themselves acclimated and say, Hi, how you doing? See? And now they're actually members of the community and going out and doing stuff. Which is kind of cool. Okay. Let's see where... <coughs> Alright. Cistern is moving along nicely. Almost done. I'm going to set up the next level self mined out. Channeled out, actually. There we go. Now you can see here a bunch of just random stones have been basically left laying wherever they fell. We will clear out <coughs> excuse me. We will clear out all of these stones eventually. Right now we have other things to do. Everybody else saw that, right? Lungfish hanging in the middle of the air. Crazy. Okay, whatever. Oh, and our fisher dwarf is being fishing. That's not exactly a good thing. It does bring in food, but... Wrong kind of food, and it's a very dangerous thing. 
After all, we have carp. But we have no leopard. Where's the leopard? Okay, that's interesting. It's not dead. Must have walked off the edge of the map. If, an, if a creature walks off the edge of the map, it doesn't die. It just disappears. So, it's not a bad thing either in this case. Okay, so, really should just pause and wait for the mega project, no, the minor mega project to finish. But, you can see how they're how they're channeling out from left to right. Top left corner to vertically down. It's actually like reading classical Japanese. Now, unfortunately, I have no way... Well, actually, I do. I take that back. This is a concept that is a little bit more advanced, but it's called burrows, and we'd be putting up a burrow anyways for security eventually. Um, basically I like to build a single burrow that covers my entire fortress proper anywhere that my civilian dwarves can go, and I don't set them to it, but I set it up so that if I ever get attacked, all my civilians can go in there and they'll be safe because they'll be behind walls and they won't have any jobs that are outside of the walls or outside of my safe zones. <coughs> so, for to set up a burrow, you hit W, don't ask me why, and we're going to hit Add New Burrow. Now this particular burrow needs to be defined, so we hit Enter. It's going to be a little bit funky to do, but we can do it anyways. So, I'm going to set up the burrow in question to cover basically all of this. This is actually not a bad place, not a bad way to have the burrow, because we have food and drink for whatever dwarves we stick inside the burrow. We have beds for them. And burrows can actually be into areas that you can't see yet. So that as you expand into them, your dwarves have still already have access to them. It's basically a layer that just sits on top and is kind of useful. Okay. Now we can add a citizen to the burrow, and in this case, I'm going to add Doc. There we go. Alright. Now I'm actually going to create a second burrow, and the second burrow is a little bit different. to find this burrow. We could name it, not going to. Don't really need to anyways, so. The second burrow is specifically for my main miners. So that they have a way to get to food and drink and get to the mining job. Because a dwarf that's inside of a burrow will not leave that burrow for anything. Even if it means their own death. They'll starve to death inside their burrows. 
<coughs> so we don't really want to do that. We've left the, uh, any dwarves that we assigned to this burrow a way to get to food, and to drink, and to beds. That way they can stay a little bit happier. And we'll get rid of this bur we'll get rid of both of the burrows eventually. But this allows us to separate the two sets of mining dwarves. And we can guarantee that we will have one dwarf working on the next project. While two dwarves work on the main on the cistern. Okay. Now like we said, we're gonna want to change oops, no, don't want to do that. Not there. There we go. Uh no, stop. So, like I said before, I like to do 5x5 five five rooms in a grid pattern. It gives a lot of flexibility when it comes to how the dwarves move around and other things. But I don't need the dwarves moving around too very much yet, so I'm going to just kind of cut that off right there. This area is going to be for workshops. I'm going to have quite a few workshops, actually, of various types that my dwarves are going to be doing jobs at. And you can kind of see the reason why I'm leaving a space there is that eventually that'll just be a wall, and walls are useful. Now, here we go, take that out, take that out, take that out. Okay, and five. So, this basic format, this basic layout, will be repeated all the way to the bottom of my fortress, or maybe not, depending on what I need it for. But it makes for fairly efficient, not the most efficient, I'll admit, not the most efficient, but fairly efficient designs, and fairly easy designs. So, for instance, I could, if I really wanted to, take and create, let's say I need this area right here, this entire area right here, all of it, to be a stockpile. I could fairly easily do that. I turn four sections into a single stockpile, and now I have a really big stockpile. And actually, I think that's exactly what I want to do. That's okay. It's still only five tall. One, two, two, three, four, five. No, it is six tall. I think. Oh, bother. I need to make sure. set up a dig command for all of this and I'll put a stockpile in here and my dwarves will be able to get into it fairly easily but let's get the other stuff in place first so I've kind of set aside a huge chunk of mining jobs. And this is going to be a fairly big deal for a single dwarf to dig out. But it's going to increase.
increase the rank, the skill level very quickly as well, so that's good. And here we go. Almost have them all designated. Do, 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 do. It is kind of annoying that the game pauses while you're designating, but it also is really good at the same time. You'll see in a bit why I prefer 5x5 five five rooms for any place that I'm going to put in uh, workshops or bedrooms. I'm going to start with workshops though. Alright, now, where is Doc? What is Doc doing? Take a look at my units. Oh, he's eating. Heh, <laughs> okay. He's having a snack. Oh look! Plump helmets are coming up. Yay! And that's probably why I don't have any barrels. It's because people are storing plump helmets in the barrels. Of course. Alright. Get this next section. of some sort. Because, yeah, how is that lungfish just hovering in space like that? That's just weird. Oh well, whatever. Alright, do we have... Still not. Okay. What is he doing now? Ah, he's gone on break. Well, hmm. Not much I can do about that. He's just going to sit there and be bored for a little bit. But, okay. Actually, I have a carpenter shop. Let's see what I can... Can I make bolts here? I cannot. That would require a craft dwarf shop. Ah, poo. Okay. Well, that would lead us down another food source that would be really good, but one that I wasn't really planning on doing just quite yet. Although, when you have a hunter, and the hunter goes out and finds something, tracks it down, and kills it, they improve their hunting skill. I'll show you here. But they also improve some of their military skills. Specifically, they improve their... those are all melee... they improve their marks dwarf and their archer skills. Bowman is actually for using bows rather than crossbows. And so, as they increase their Mark's Dwarf skills, they actually become, well, better hunters, and they become better units in your military if they're going to be using a bow, or a crossbow, I should say. <coughs> so, Mark's Dwarves are really cool to have, and the best way to get them without having to put them in through tr proper training is to send them on hunting jobs. So that's what we'll do. But we need crossbow bolts. Which we don't actually have any. I should have packed some. I didn't. I made a boo-boo. Are you still on break? You're still on break. All three of my miners are on break now. 
Uh, okay, there's Doc. He's off break. Back on duty. Alright. Come on, Doc. Dig it out. There might be a little bit of high hoeing here somewhere, probably. But if so, we can't hear the dwarf actually going and doing hi ho, hi ho. Which, considering how drunk these guys are compared to those hi ho dwarves, I'm kind of glad I can't actually hear them. I mean, seriously, these guys really love their booze. Speaking of booze, can I get. Can I make booze? How much boost do I have? Oh, I have some booze left. Good. Okay. We have a room! It's not the best room in the world, but it is a room that we can use to do stuff. So, we're going to build, with B, a workshop, W, and the first workshop we're going to put in that isn't upstairs and will need to be those others will need to be moved in a bit is a mason's workshop. And buildings are present, buildings are present, all sorts of things are in the way. But there we go. All right. Now I could use granite, but I don't really care. I'm using gabbro. Alrighty. Now, the mason's workshop can only be built by somebody who has masonry. Guess what our peasant that came in, who happens to be a hammer dwarf, happens to also have now as a turned on ability. Masonry! Huzzah! Alright, now we have a mason's shop. While your dwarves don't mind things that are like chairs, tables, and other things that are made out of wood, they prefer having them made out of stone. So, one of the first things we're going to build is we're actually going to build some blocks. Uh, we're only going to build one because I don't typically use blocks in most of my construction. A couple of things I will, but like they're like bridges, uh, and trade depots, and things that are going to be very, very permanent and hard to replace. Because they're pretty that way. Blocks are prettier when they're used for construction. I'm also going to need a floodgate. And I'm going to need a total of ten hatch covers. Now, I can't build all of them in one go, because you can only queue ten jobs. but I can get my mason to do something now. And what I'm going to do is the floodgate will go here, and I'll allow this chamber to flood up. And I'm going to have floor grates right here. I'm going to channel that out either when I've got the floodgate when I've got the floor grates here or after I've got the floodgate in place. And then I'll have a lever probably right here, that I'll use to link to this floodgate to control whether the floodgate is open or closed. If the floodgate is open and this chamber has any water in it, the water will flow into here. And with a floodgate, with a, uh, with the grates across here, it'll fall down to my cistern, which is being slowly dug out. Very, very slowly dug out. I'm going to channel out one more hole right here. Actually, I can probably just set that job up right now. Nobody will be able to get to that job for a little bit because neither of my... Uh, actually, let me take a look at that. Sparrow 2. Oh no, they can. Okay, they can get to it. I 
told a lie. That spot right there will eventually be where I put my well. And then I'll put maybe some statues in here, make it a really pretty area. I might even just go through and turn the entire thing into, like, I don't know. Something fancy pants, I guess. Do I not have... I have audio, so I don't know why. Eh. Okay, whatever. Usually I turn sound sense on first, so I might have needed to sound, turn sound sense on first. Oh, look! He's brewing stuff! We have beer! And more than just beer, we have dwarven wine and dwarven other stuff. Alright, you can see some new symbols in here. Let's take a look at those. That is a Gabbro hatch cover of fairly decent quality. That's a basic Gabbro hatch cover. Some Gabbro blocks, a Gabbro fl floodgate of some decent quality. So, you can kind of see, just kind of accidentally almost, that <coughs> as the uh, Mason Dwarf goes through, and gets a little bit more practice. I'm going to put more of those in because they are useful. As they get more practice, the quality of their output increases. Actually, fairly quickly, too. So, that's really useful, actually. What you can do as an advanced concept is if you look here where it says profile requires manager. Once we actually have a manager, we can set it up so that dwarves of a certain skill level can access this place, but other dwarves can't. So you can use one place to produce, mass produce, you know, cheap things like doors or grates or bars or something, and get their skills up, and then have a second shop set up to high quality items for, you know, furnishings and high quality statues and things that you need, you know, pretty for, the higher the quality the better. But since we only have one mason, we don't really need the training sector, we just have automatic training. Which begs the question, what is he doing? He's sleeping. Oh. I guess even dwarves need naps, eventually. Needs empty food storage item. Well, duh. Wait, did I make that? I did. Oh, bother. Whoops. I made a boo-boo. This corridor is four wide. I usually only make three wide corridors. It's not going to be too big of a deal, but it will make a difference. Okay, now, you can see why I would need a 3x3 three three room, but I'm sure you're asking me, what's this extra space for? I'm going to show you. We're going to put a stockpile there so that our dwarf doesn't need to go nearly as far for what they need. And we can kind of change the way the settings are set because there's some things that we don't want this place to be able to access. We do not want it to have any metal ores. It doesn't need it. It's a mason shop. But, if it puts metal ores there, they're just going to sit there and sit there until somebody moves them. We actually don't want to put any economic stones in there, because most economic stone we're actually just going to want to sit on and use for very specific purposes. Limestone, dolomite, chalk, marble, uh, calcite these can all be used as flux stones to help with the production of steel. 
bituminous coal and lignite can be turned into coke, which is used as fuel for smelting metals, which is good stuff. Uh, gypsum, kalanite, alabaster, selenite, and satin spar. Actually, I'm not sure what these three are done. But uh, these two can be turned into... Uh, gypsum can be turned into plaster casts, and I have no idea what that's good for, but it's used for something, obviously. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an economic stone. I'm also going to forbid clay. So any other type of stone can be used in this particular uh, stockpile, which will make it a lot closer for the dwarf who's going and doing masonry work. He'll just be able to go grab the thing and move it fairly quickly. Because a, unless a dwarf is looking for a specific type of thing, they go for the closest one. Even if they are looking for a specific type of thing, they just go for the closest example of whatever it is. So. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Well, I may, may have goofed, but it's not going to be a fatal goof. I'll be able to switch it up and change it around and make it as if it never had happened. I was planning on smoothing out most of these corridors anyways, so... Eh. Oh, it's raining! Yay for rain! Why do I keep going up? Why do I go down? Oh, whatever. Okay. This, I believe, is the last time I'm going to be channeling downwards. Yes, it is, because I'm at the bottom. Okay, good. And struck turquoise. And golden bear. Ooh. Wow, okay. A lot of gemstone quality stones in this area. On this floor. That's kind of nice. That's kind of cool. Okay. Alright, now. I've constructed... Well, I've, I've built myself some hatch covers or uh, some floor grates, I should say. Those are floor grates, not hatch covers, right? Please tell me they're floor grates. They're hatch covers. I built the wrong thing. Oh well, I'll find a use for those eventually. I needed grates, not hatch covers. Grates. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And it's more skills for my mason. It's all good. Yay for faster routes for this particular dwarf to move along. Okay. And we have a secondary room ready. So we're actually going to build our second main workshop. This workshop is the... where is it? No. Although we'll be needing that in a minute. Let's see, that's the Masons... Where is it? Oh, there it is. Blind. The Mechanics Workshop. The Mechanics Workshop is used to do two things. You make stone me uh, mechanisms, which are really, really magical, uh, and are very useful uh, to basically either create traps with links to other equipment, or to make uh, trigger points, levers, all sorts of interesting things, or to connect certain things, like floodgates, to a lever. 
In order to connect a floodgate to a lever, you need a total of three mechanisms and you need a floodgate that has been constructed somewhere. The first mechanism is used to make the lever and the other two mechanisms are, con are used to link the lever to the floodgate. Now, these mechanisms can work across an infinite distance. We don't ask. They just work. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now we have a mason shop. Oh, that's right. I don't think I have a mechanic. I don't think I do. I do. No, wait, I do. What's he doing then? All right, read dwarves. What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? Ah, okay. Let me show you something here. Slept uneasily due to noise. I can't move my mouse, unfortunately. Uh, if there is any digging that is occurring within eight squares or eight tiles of a dwarf that's trying to sleep, he doesn't sleep as well. So, the eight tiles actually includes vertical. So if the digging is occurring four tiles down and four tiles to the left, that's still within eight tiles. So, we've been digging near the only place where we have beds. Dwarves are getting interrupted in their sleep. And they're not very happy about that. Not that I blame them. I mean, digging is very noisy. Alright, why is this job not being completed here? Alright, where is... Oh, he's getting a drink. That's why. Wait, what do you mean you have no job? Of course you have a job. Or no, you don't. You're actually effectively done. Uh, right. The... Okay. I'm going to remove... Eh, doesn't matter if I do that there, but that does. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the ramps because they don't really do anything at the bottom of my cistern. Okay. And now for a slightly more advanced concept. We're going to put in a stock, we're going to put in what's called a garbage dump. Garbage dumps are really, really useful. So it's a zone, so I for zones, and it only needs to be one tile big. In fact, garbage dumps are most efficient when they are only one tile big because they perform what's called a quantum stockpile. Now, call it a garbage dump, make it active, and just leave it be. What a garbage dump can do, though, is designations, B for set building item properties, and then D again to dump items. I'm going to start on this corner here. I'm just going to go all the way down. This is going to clear out everything that's on the stairs as well. That's why we started up there. And we're going to order our dwarves to dump basically everything that is down here. Now, we could do this on other levels in the buildings and in, in throughout our fortress. And some people do. I typically just leave rock where it lies, but I do have stockpile set up so that gems are brought in for convenience sake. Speaking of gems, I'm going to put in two new workshops. Jewelers workshops. That makes them out of 
Madagabro. And make the Madagabro. Now, I don't have anybody who can build these workshops. Just do. I don't have anybody who can. It just does not happen. Uh, but I'm still going to put in two stockpiles that are designated just for gems so that they can get in there and actually take care of that. Okay. Eventually. One other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this stockpile change the settings no longer allows gems. <coughs> there we go. So what they'll end up doing is they'll move all these gems here, or as many of them as they can, to these 16 places here and here. Eventually, I'll be able to put bins in, and they'll be able to use those. But for now, can't really do that. Alright. Now, if you remember, I said barrels... Uh, in the last video, I said barrels are okay. Barrels are good. You actually probably should be making barrels. But I have a better use than to make barrels. I can't remember if it's here at the Mason's Workshop. Or it'll be at a Craft Dwarf Shop. Which is, apparently, it's going to be at a Craft Dwarf Shop. So I'll do that later. I'll do that in a little bit. Okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. They finally finish. Ah, I do have mechanics workshop finally. Yay, okay. So, I'm going to make th three mechanisms. And I said the mechanics workshop is good for two things rock mechanics, or rock mechanisms, and rock making traction benches. Traction benches are used in your hospital. And basically, they just act as a way to make sure that your dwarves are immobilized. They are bugged in a little bit of ways, but they are necessary. You have to have a couple of them, at least one, and if you have more than one dwarf that needs immobilization simultaneously, or needs traction simultaneously, you need to have one for each dwarf. So, traction benches are important. They require a rope, they require a block, and they require a table. Alright, let's see, what else do I need right away? Uh, I don't like where my previous carpenter's workshop is. That's, that's a bad place for it to be up, is up in the main meeting hall area. Or in the first meeting hall area, so I'm going to put a second one down here. Just a little bit downstairs. And you can see I currently have no idlers. I'm not going to get very many idlers for a little while. Mainly because there's a lot of rocks to move through here. Actually, I can do this. Remember how I said I didn't need this barrel for very long? I wasn't kidding. I just needed it for that short period of time. Bye-bye, barrel. Been nice knowing ya. Okay. Hmm, I may need my farmer to get back to farming. But it looks like I'm okay for now. Do 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 do. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Those are grates. Water can flow through them. Uh, if they are magma proof, magma can flow through them. Smoke, miasma, other things can, go, can flow through them. But your dwarves can walk on top of them just fine. They're strong enough to hold up. They do require a floor to be right next to them, or a construction of some sort to be right next to them. Which is why this area here is only too wide. If it was three wide, there'd be an open space. And I don't really want there to be an open space. Alright, so let's get ready for the next section here. Uh, I need a floodgate here. And I'm going to need to put my floor grates here. So, first things first, we're going to build the floodgate. And we only have one. One thing you can do is if you're looking for a specific unit or specific thing, uh, when you're looking to build something like this, and you're here, you can hit X to show you an expanded list. The expanded list shows you everything and the quality of the thing. We only have one, obviously, so you know, it doesn't really matter, but it's kind of nice to know that you can do that. Then we're going to put in... Uh, floor grates. There we are. Uh, you can only put in one floor grate at a time. And you can see... Oh, wow, we actually have some really nice ones here. This is a basic one. This is a slightly better one. This is a fairly decent one. That's actually a really well-made one. Now, like I said, I don't really care what order they go in. But I think I'm actually going to keep a, a bit of an eye on it. Alright, where did I put the granite one? Okay. One of these is made out of granite, and I think for... Oh, there it is. Okay. Remove that completely. Okay, build. Shift G. Because they're going to have slightly different colors, I'm going to put the Gabbro gates flanking the granite ones. Even though they're all basically exactly the same, the colors are going to be patterned, sort of. And yes, it's purely vanity. But a little vanity never hurt anybody. Okay. So, I'm going to put in another Mason's Workshop right here. Oh, you know what? I was a... I was a dum-dum. I don't want to put a Carpenter's Workshop right there. Let's go ahead and remove it. I want there to be a Carpenter's Workshop right here because it is a little bit more symmetrical that way. What I'll do is I'll put a Mason's Workshop here, Mason's Workshop there, Carpenter's Workshop here, Carpenter's Workshop here. Uh, not sure what I'm going to put in that corner just yet, but a pair of jewelers here. Uh, probably... Not sure what I'm going to put in these three but we'll figure that out. Probably Crafts Dwarf Shop, Crafts Dwarf Shop, Crafts Dwarf Shop. That sounds good. That gives me three Crafts Dwarf Shops, two of which I can have tasks to doing specific things constantly, and one for just kind of random stuff. I think I'll make that one a stone one. Yeah. Speaking of making stone... There we go. And...
because you will only ever need rock in here, you may as well make it out of make it so that you can store rock nearby. Again, you do not want anything except for other stone to be available there unless you really do need other types available. So block all permit that. There we go. Okay. Uh oh. Is that. Oh, just flies. Okay. Some flies or something. Wait, are those puppies? Do we have puppies? We have puppies! Huh, I missed that. Cool. Puppies. Now the hens will not start laying until I have hive bo or until I have nesting boxes, which I'm not going to have nesting boxes for a little bit. Not too much longer, but it is going to take me a little time to get nesting boxes set up. Let's see. Now that we actually have two of those down, that's perfect right there. So, planter cons cancels construct building. Oh. Because my diggers came up and they dug out that section and now you can't reach that one spot. Of course not. There we go. Okay. So, they did put a pause on that. So we're going to un unpause it. There we go. Wait, why are you hauling... stone from all the way over there. Huh. Weird. Drop off. Inaccessible. Oh, somebody else was in it. Heh. Okay. A uh, workshop. Another carpenter shop because that one is over there and I'm going to put this one here. And we're going to make it out of Gabbro again, because why not? Okay. You can so kind of see how my digger is almost done here, and that I've actually got probably, let's see, two of the diggers for sure. But I have one digger that's just not going away from here, and that's Doc, because he can't. He very literally cannot leave this area. So he's going to keep digging forever and ever and ever. But the other miners can actually be grabbed for other jobs in other areas because they are no longer in a burrow. Which makes life, my life a little bit easier. Alright, build workshop. Crest Dwarf Workshop. And make it out of Gabbro. And we'll have that one dedicated to using stone. We'll put this one dedicated to using probably bone, honestly, because bone arrows are really, or bone bolts are really useful, honestly. And then we'll have, for wood, we'll probably put right there. Hmm. Well, for generic stuff, I'll put that one there. Yeah. Okay. I got 
do have to keep an eye on my alcohol. Oh, good. I have 80 alcohol still. Okay. Now, I'm not going to get started on my major sleeping quarters area just yet. But I am going to put in some more floor grates. So now I need to build the lever that I'm going to attach to it. So it is way down here, traps and levers, and just a lever. I could build a pressure plate, I'm not going to. I want to use this later for a danger room, that's really, really useful. Uh, these make for some decent traps. I don't think you actually need a mechanism for this one. I think you do for that one, and you need a trigger of some sort. I know you don't need a mechanism for that one. It just grabs a thing. One of the most overpowered traps in the entire game. You can trap a titan with it. Assuming that, you know, it's made out of something that's magma proof. magma and fireproof and all sorts of other things. Now you can see how this is starting to get a little bit emptier, but it's still taking a very long time to empty it completely out. And there is one very important thing to note. Anything that's been moved to a garbage dump is automatically forbidden, which means your dwarves can no longer see it as a valid thing to use at all. So all this nice gabbro here and the kimberlite and the cobaltite and all this other stuff that's in here ooh, even these gold nuggets are completely forbidden and your dwarves will never task to pick them up unless we tell them they are no longer forbidden. Which is B. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's D. Dyslexic moment. Sorry. More migrants. I'm going to take care of those in a minute. Alright. It's D, then B, and then C for reclaim items and buildings. You can reclaim items and build items over a big area. You can also, if you wanted to, forbid things over an area. Uh, like, if you needed to forbid a particular workshop, you could forbid anybody from using that workshop for a while. But we want to actually reclaim these items. And now, if you look at them, they are all usable. And yet, there's something like 80 items stacked in a single tile. This is the essence of quantum stockpiling. The stockpile itself, very, very small. But you have a lot of stuff in it. Alright, where are... Okay, those are my creatures that are already on place. And here's my new immigrants. Okay, let's see. We've got quite a few of them now. Alright. Let's go take a look at Dwarf Therapist. What does Dwarf Therapist say? Well, Dwarf Therapist says that I have... Four new, th new arrivals so far. I see at least one, two... Oh, they're up and down, up and down. Three... 
four usable. Well, that might be a six, five, four usable for sure. Yeah. And what the? What did he bring? What is that? What are those? The H is probably a horse. Yeah, it's a young horse. Oh, it's a mule. It's a mule. Okay. Interesting. Just like real mules, uh, mules are non-breedable. They cannot be bred because they are sterile, because they are the offspring of a horse and a donkey. And they are grazers of a prodigious appetite. So I am probably going to have to put them in here. Alright, what else did they bring? Uh, yak? Oh, I've got a kitten, too. Yay. Alright, so I've got some dogs, some cats. I don't need to put the dogs and the cats in, because, well, I just don't need to. Uh, but the yak calf, the mule fowl, and the horse fowl, I do. Because they need food and safety of some sort. Okay. Which I really need to start thinking about very, very soon. Because... This is not exactly a safe location, really. I don't have a way of just blocking off the entrance and making it safe for my dwarves. Which I really should be thinking about. And I will. Uh, I'm going to order three more mechanisms. a lot of gems of some of so different sorts. <laughs> Do I have a gem cutter? No. I have a shearer who is absolutely useless to me right now. Uh, plant gathering, plant processing, that'll be good. Um, milking. I do have some animals that can be milked, but yeah, no. And one absolutely useless peasant. Well, Sazir, do you have any? Okay, you could make a decent warrior. Fine, I'll give you that. In the meantime, I need you to be a gem cutter. Just because. Give you gem cutting, gem setting. I need somebody to do something with these gems. Gems make... Okay, that's... not something I was hoping to see yet. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Rigoth, Udalishkoth, Udalishkoth, Dwarven child has been possessed. This means that he has a fey mood, or actually, specifically, a possessed mood. Uh, a strange mood. And he is going to try to claim a workshop. And I should probably be following him, but that's okay, because... He's flashing like that. We can see where he's going. He has claimed the Crest Dwarf Shop. And he... Wow, okay, found all of the things he was looking for. So, what, the, what happens is, a dwarf who has a strange mood of a various types, uh, possessed, fey, um... God, there's a couple others... Uh, fell, 
Fell moods are bad. Fell moods are very bad because they will kill a dwarf. Specifically, just for the fact that they need to kill the dwarf. And fell moods only really happen if you have some really bad stuff that's happened in your in your uh, fortress already. But what will happen is that the dwarf will claim a shop of some sort. Uh, I've seen him claim mason shops, gem shops, woodcutter shops, or uh, not woodcutter, but carpentry shops. Uh, all sorts of different shops can be claimed. But they'll claim the shop, and then they'll gather some materials together. And then they will produce something that is unique. It'll be a legendary item of some sort. And in this case, it's a child. Now, possessed moods are the most annoying moods. Because the other moods, your dwarf not only feels really good about having made something special, but they also uh, gain a huge stat bonus. Enough to get them up to legendary in that particular skill. Whatever it was, that labor was, that they had their mood on, they become legendary at. Possessed dwarves don't. It's annoying, but it happens. There we go. Okay. Actually, since I'm trying to make that one into a stone one anyways... settings. One thing else to know about moods, strange moods of any kind, if your dwarf can't get the materials they're looking for, they go insane. And there are three types of insanity. There's melancholy, at which point they basically try to kill themselves in usually a very spectacular way. Jumping off, you know, cliffs of a hundred levels, throwing themselves down staircases, that kind of thing. They go insane. There's the second... Oh, look what the... All right, he's already done. It's a ring. It is made out of stone. It is... probably not that useful, honestly. Alright, we're going to look at it, though. It is a Gabbro ring. All Crass Dwarf ship is of the highest quality. You will always see this line in any artifact. It is a ring that menaces with spikes of Gabbro. On the ring is an image of dwarves carved in Gabbro. The dwarves are laid in brain. The artwork relates to the foundation of Raven Vessels. That's our town by the Tome of Theaters of the Castle of Destiny in the year 30. I believe that's ours, anyways. No, uh, Z. Oh, no, that's a completely different... Yeah. Okay, so that's not even regarding our castle at all. That's a, our, our fortress. That's just... That's just funny, actually. That's... That's actually hilarious. Um, that it is considered, we are considered so uneventful that they wanted to go some, he had to go get information about some other place. That's just, that's just how hilarious. Okay. Alright, now, for the last two workshops that I'm going to put in right away, I'm going to put in a pair of stills. so that I can actually remove bump and uh, you know what, we're going to leave that one in place until such time as I'm sure that I don't need it. Okay. Now, do, 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 do. Okay, 
almost done here. Did I not make my lever? I could have sworn I did make it. Oh. T. Lever. There we go. Okay. Put the lever here. I'm going to look at the quality. Because I'm going to have a lot of dwarves moving in and out of here. I want the quality to be as high as possible. I also kind of want it to stand out a little bit so it doesn't fade into the background. So that I can find it later on. Uh oh, what just happened? <gasps> oh! Trade Dwarf! Wait, Autumn? Already? Wow. Okay. So. Wait, who? View him. Yep, he's a dwarf. Must be autumn already. I didn't even realize. Okay. Um, okay, so. Every autumn, the dwarves will send a trade caravan to your fortress. Uh, if you have a trade depot, you can exchange goods for, well, you'd call it wealth, but really it doesn't do anything but act as an arbitrary valuation system. This thing is worth 30, well, turtle shells, effectively. And in my case... I'm not ready for them. So I don't have a place for them to trade. And yeah, absolutely useless. One thing that will happen though is the diplomat will still come on and go find my leader and we'll have discussions about what we want to trade next year. Which is all, always kind of nice tells us what they need. See, outpost liaison. The merchant will just sit over there and not do anything. If I really wanted to, I could kill the merchant, but i he's my species of merchant, so I don't want to do that, because that would piss them off. And that's a bad thing. Okay. But, that's all for later. Uh, you see him? Wow, he's fast. He's looking for... Want to go to a new screen? Nobles, N. He's looking for leader. Whoever the expedition leader is, uh, once we get to the point where we have a certain number of dwarves and we have a certain amount of cash that we've... Or, shells that we've generated for uh, he'll be he can become a mayor the mayor gets reelected every honestly I don't know how often whatever uh, that can be turned into a baron who in turn can become replaced by a king yeah when the king shows up all sorts of things are fun but right now, we like Leader. And Leader is busy doing stuff, so the outpost liaison is trying to chase him down. You can see. Chasing! More chasing! He's actually not even keeping up anymore. That guy is too fast. Yeah, my dwarves are busy doing stuff. All sorts of stuff. There we go. And last... Crafts Dwarf Shop. I'll be making some other... Uh, some of these other ones, like the fishery... Uh, the fishery, the butchers, the tanner shop... 
I usually make those upstairs above ground, or if I make them below ground, I hollow out a place from above so that they are considered outside. Uh, things that are outside, when they rot, they don't create miasma. When they're inside, they do. And the butcher shop, the tanner shop, and the fishery all have a very decent chance of causing rotting food. Rotting food is bad, and it causes stinkies that the dwarves don't like at all. Leatherworks can be inside, though. That's just taking tanned hides and turning them into stuff. We'll do that. Clothier's shop, we'll put somewhere like right down here or something. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Farmer's workshop, we'll put on the level above this, along with the kitchen. I think that's what we're going to do. I should probably get ready. Oh, right. Uh, no, I don't need zones. I need my burrow. Yeah, there we are. But that's why he can't get to the dump items. He's still stuck in the burrow. He doesn't have any other jobs, but he's stuck in the burrow. I don't think they went downstairs, but I'd be surprised if they had gone up. I didn't see them go upstairs. Okay, there they are. Okay. Ah, okay, yay. My lever is in place. It's been built. A person with mechanics built it, which means leader. So I can add a new task to it where we can link it up to a different thing, or we can pull the lever. Which is kind of fun. Pull the lever, crunk! Alright, we want to link this lever up to a floodgate. And we only have one floodgate, but if we had more, we can scroll through the list with the plus key. Or the minus key. Alright, and we hit enter. Now this controls which mechanism goes into the floodgate. Uh, since not very many dwarves are going to be walking near the floodgate, the lower quality one, but more dwarves are going to be walking near the lever itself, we want the higher quality. The reason why is that when dwarves pass high quality stuff, they get happy thoughts. And happy thoughts means that they, well, get happier. The happier they are, the better. Because they're less likely to throw tantrums, they're less likely to go insane, and other things. I'm throwing a lot of concepts here, but if you go look at the wiki, you'll be able to see what most of those concepts basically mean. Okay, I'm going to create here a safety net, basically, for this. Do I want to take it that far? No, I don't. I really don't. I do, however, want to do it... Oh, why not? It's not going to hurt me any to do it all the way. Okay. What I'm going to do is because this is hard rock, I'm going to dig this area out. When I've dug this area out, I'm going to smooth these stones here, and then I'm going to convert them into fortifications. If water has a way to get off the map, and it can flow through fortifications, then it won't continue to pile up. Off the map is an infinite space even if it technically should be going into solid rock. It's an infinite space off the map. Uh, what happened? Oh, we found Dampstone, which is underneath the river. Gee, I'm surprised. Dampstone exists 
in all let's see if you have one spot of water it exists in the 9, the 9, and the 8 so 18, 26 spaces immediately surrounding that one so you watch they're going to continue to throw the alarm at me I know, I know, believe me, I know. And they're not going to try to dig past it. I'm going to have to tell them that they honestly really can dig past it. Okay. Which I'm going to do now. There we go. Oh look, more damp stone. There are two types of design digging designation cancellation, or well, three. Damp stone, which is either water in the rock or water be above the rock, uh, or you can get warm stone, which is magma behind the rock or above the rock. Or you can get uh, open caves. And that'll technically stop digging te te designations because there won't be anything left to dig. It'll be an open space. There we go, and now we're past the, most of the river. And they're going to keep digging it out. Yes, yes, I know, I know. My poor little dwarves. Now, if you're paying attention, you've seen it throwing alerts at me, saying, They can't plant seeds. We don't have plump helmet spawn they might just be right. Let's take a look here. Stocks. Go down. Oh, no, wait, they are right here. Okay. Well, they're probably not right. We might not have any plump helmet spawn, but we probably do. So that's just fine. Justice. I have no need for justice. Stone. Yeah, nobody's doing any of that. Okay, yeah. Plump helmets, we don't cook with them, but we do brew them. And plump helmet spawn, we have at least 20 plump helmet spawn. They just need to get their act together and go find it. But it's not where they're expecting to find it, therefore they have to go look for it somewhere else and the game gets freaky when it has to go looking elsewhere. It doesn't like having to go look at different places. Okay, come on. Just need you guys to dig me out the relief valve. That's all I'm doing. There we go. Almost done. Almost done. Okay. Now, before I let them get too far away from me... There we go. Okay. because I absolutely know that those sectors are bad and they don't have any fits trying to dig it out. I am going to order my dwarves to go through and dump out all these lovely stones because they're stones and they're useful and we like stones. Alright, now we're going to do another designation. This is to smooth stone out. It's just like designating anything else. You just choose the area you want to designate. The, the lab 
number that you need to have in order to to smooth stone out is you need to have stone detailing. And it is there's two things you can do with stone detailing. One is that you can actually go through and you can smooth stone. And the second thing that you can do with it is that you can actually uh, co create what are called engravings. And engravings allow you to go through and basically make really pretty pictures on already smoothed stone. Dwarves get happy thoughts when they see high quality engravings and so and they also get happy thoughts when they, they they move a little bit faster and they get happier thoughts when they're walking on or near smooth stone. So it does make sense to have a couple of dwarves who are really high skilled at smoothing stone because you can turn them into really good engravers. And really good engravers are really awesome. Okay. So it looks like, yep, he's finished smoothing all that. Designate. Now we're going to have him carve fortifications. Or at least have somebody carve fortifications. I, you might actually still need the stone detailing skill for that. We'll see here in a minute. Diplomat is still trying to catch up to the leader. Actually, what I can do is to save him from going insane, and yes, he can go insane. I'm going to turn off stone refuse and item hauling for leader. He's not going to have any job at all. And the, okay, expedition, the uh, emissary has managed to catch him. So I just hit enter to stop him from doing anything else. Okay, they're going to have a nice little conversation. Um, okay, so I can move around in the right hand list with the up and down arrows. I can change the priority with the left and right arrows. There we go. Uh, and then I can use the plus and minus keys to scroll the left hand side, which just basically changes what group I'm looking at. The lower the priority, the less likely that thing is to show up on the next caravan. But if it does show up, it's going to be cheaper. The higher the priority, it's going to show up, especially at this level, but it's also going to cost you quite a bit to get it. So there's some things that I do actually need. I am going to need pigtail seats. Training spears. That'll come later. Uh, I'm probably also going to need some bolts, just because. Yes, I have three picks. I'll probably want more later, but I can make mine eventually. Um, I do want some robes, some tunics, some coats, and some cloaks, just because people like to have clothes. Same with caps and hoods, gloves and mittens, socks, lots of socks, I'm willing to pay a, pr a premium for that, and trousers, don't think I need any pets, not yet anyways. I am going to want uh, Dwarven Ale, Beer, and Rum, because 
because they do like to have a variety of alcoholic beverages. They don't make mixers, but they do like a mix. Uh, don't want any cheese, don't want any of that. Definitely don't want any of those. Useful, but I'm going to be making my own here in a bit. Uh, no, no. If I didn't have Fluxstone as an option on here, I would probably be going and getting as much Fluxstone as I can. As it is, I want to get Hematite. Because Hematite is iron. Let's see, any other... I want to get as much Lignite as I can. Magnetite, that's more iron. Lignite. Wow, okay, they don't have bituminous coal. That's interesting. They don't have access to it. Let's see. I can just ask for some bags, pre-made bags, but I eh, don't really want to. Ropes would be useful. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to use barrels. I have another method that I want to use, and I'll show you that in a minute. I do kind of want quivers, but I can make my own. Okay, charcoal and coke as much as possible. large pots. I'm actually going to be making a lot of large pots. Because large pots I can make out of stone and they weigh very little. They weigh nearly as little as a wooden barrel, but they store twice as much. Which is, you know, nice. Uh, I'm not going to get any metal bars, I don't think. Okay, so once you've chosen everything you've got, uh, if you need to, and if you're not sure if you have a certain thing, you can go look at your stockpile. In my case, looking at my stockpile does not tell me a whole lot. Wait a minute, do I have? I have weapons, I just don't have ammunition. Okay, that's fine. Once you've made all your selections, you hit escape. Oops, not twice, just once, just once. Hey! They've finished clearing all that out. Very nice. Okay. And I've pulled the lever. Okay, that's even better. Now he's going to show me everything that I'm requesting and what the variation in price is going to be. Now he's going to ask me... He's going to tell me what he has... A, what he's looking for. What's this? Pangolin. Uh, it rolls into a ball. Whoop de doo. Oh, it's a ball. It's cute. It's cuddly. It might even be fuzzy. I have no idea. I have no idea what a pangolin is. It sounds like a either an ant eater or a. Well, that's interesting. Apparently it's big enough that it's disrupt disrupting my dwarves. That annoys me. Okay. You can see that the floodgate is now gone. That's because I've pulled the lever, and the floodgate is now open. So I can do something like... Dig that out right there. I could dig out more, but I'm not going to. I just want to dig out those two spots. I want my dwarves to come up. There they are. One dig 
digs that out, and the other one digs the other one out, and then they run away. Okay. And here we are. Okay, now the dwarves next autumn are going to be looking for short swords. Uh, they're not going to get those. They're going to be looking for some toys. Probably not going to get those. Headwear, uh, they might get some of that as it breaks. I'm not going to be making musical instruments. I might make some figurines just for sale purposes. Meat typically goes right into my food supplies, so does powder, crutches. I don't usually get around to making cheese, handware, or quivers. They will just buy the regular stuff at regular price, but those are what they're specially looking for. And I got two words for them. No way. Not happening. Nuh-uh. Okay. Hooray! Our fortunes rise and fall together. And he's going to leave the map at this point. Having completed his job. And my cistern is starting to fill. Now the numbers indicate how deep the water is. I've actually turned that on. Uh, there is a setting in the Lazy Noob Pack, otherwise you have to go into the init files. Or is it D init? Okay. Um, otherwise it just shows flowy double till days, and that's not very useful. This is actually useful. Dwarves can walk in water up to, f up to level 4 without any difficulty. Once it hits level 4 or f higher, they start swimming in it. And most dwarves can't swim. They are terrible swimmers. So, yeah, not a good idea to have, you know, deep water anywhere that you need stuff to work. You can see my cistern is filling up very quickly, actually. Water that is only one level deep will evaporate over time. Fairly quickly, in fact. Okay. And the cistern is filling. Yay! Okay, so I think now that I have at least one level of water in there, I'm going to turn that off by having them pull the lever again. It takes a little time before a dwarf will actually show up to you know, pull the lever, but... Okay. Now I have a bunch of dwarfs that are just sitting around doing nothing. Why... Eat, drink, store item in barrel, store item in barrel, plant seeds, pull the lever, couple of dwarves with no jobs at all. By hitting J from the main screen, you can look at uh, all the different jobs that are being tasked to different dwarves are. And you can see here, there's a couple of different plant seeds jobs that there just aren't any dwarves to do, which is a shame. But that plant job, plant seed, can be done. So the woodworker is being sent to pull the lever, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. We have we can repopulate the entire initial expedition just in children. Useless, useless children. They don't do any jobs, although they will harvest food. That they will harvest food, uh, plants that are there. Okay. I have the jobs. Why am I not getting anybody... They've been assigned to carve fortifications. Why aren't they carving them? Do I look at my jobs again? Break. 
showing up in the job list. It should at least show up in the job list. Has a detailed stone job. It's got path. Oh well. Part of the reason why I had them close the lever off was so that I didn't accidentally flood the, the entire fortress. Because if the water had gotten up to here, it would just keep flowing in. Infinitely. Rivers are an infinite water source. And infinite water sources can be tricky things. Now, the reason why I built this section here both symmetry and if the river freezes over it'll freeze to here and then I'll still have the secondary reservoir here above my main reservoir okay so I am now going to build the well dwarves prefer to get their water from a well and to build a well you need a block singular, a bucket, singular, and some sort of a rope, singular. You also need a mechanism. I did not realize I needed mechanisms. I uh, may as well use this one, because that's a better quality mechanism. Oh, right, a winch. You need a winch. That makes sense. Mechanisms can be turned into a lot of things. There he is. Okay, he's going to carve the fortifications now. Okay. A couple of things to know about wells. Wells, uh, basically they just go vertically straight down. So they need an open path all the way down to a water source they will dump their bucket all the way to the bottom of said water source. So if there's something at the bottom, like a dead body or something like that, that can actually contaminate the bucket and therefore the well. Uh, the path must be clear in order for the clear to a water source uh, in order for the bucket to be able to go down. However, you can set up things like hatches and grates so that if, say, somebody walks on a pressure plate here, it opens up the, buck the grate here, for instance. That can add, add some extra security to uh, a fortress. This well is almost finished. Uh, it needs somebody to design it. Fortunately, Leader is actually an architect, so... Okay... Now where are you going? Oh, you're thirsty. Okay. Well... You're lazy, but that's okay. Okay, now that's interesting. You see by the, f the fact that it's all been turned into flat lines, that this is pretty much completely planted out. This one is getting close to being planted out. Which means we basically have a lot of people who are planting a lot of food. Also means we're harvesting an awful lot. Or we will be. Which, honestly, not a bad thing. Okay. Alright, so, we've basically got our most basic setup. I did want to show you one last thing before we wrap this one up. Now, barrels are made at your carpenter's workshop. And barrels can store a lot of stuff. Food, uh, bags for seeds, you can store uh, alcohol of all sorts in them, milk, all sorts of things can be stored in barrels. But barrels have a disadvantage. They are usually heavy, and they only hold a certain amount of whatever. At your craft dwarf shop, 
you can make stuff out of rock, wood, bone, shell, and make modif modified things, basically just crafts. Crafts can typically just be sold for a much higher, uh, higher value than the raw version. So at this, at this craft dwarf shop, we're going to make this a rock. And we're going to make... Actually, we're going to make... Uh, let's see, I need... We need five of those. Yep. And I want to make five of these... take that all back. I take that all back. I don't want to do any of that just yet. <laughs> the reason being, the only person who actually has stone crafting of any level is also the person who has stone detailing. So, yeah. We don't want to distract her from finishing the one job she needs to do right now which is finished getting these fortifications carved. Almost done with it, too. Oh, yes, you do have plump helmet spawn. Don't lie. We know you have plump helmet spawn. They're all over the place. They're just scattered in, you know, a half a dozen locations instead of where they need to be, in, which is in bags. Come on, two more sections, one more section, and... Done. There we go. Oh, no, I just needed to be on that same level. Okay, now I can set that up. So, back into rock. You can actually make very similar things out of wood. Uh, you can't make everything that you can make out of rock out of wood, but you can make a lot of stuff like nest box and hives. But wood usually is not fire safe and it's definitely not magma safe. Bone. Bone bolts are really useful. Uh, plus you can make some armor items out of bone. It's not the best armor type, but it's actually pretty decent. Shell, you can make some armor out of shell, but getting your hands on a shell is not always easy. Alright. So, I'm going to build one, two, three, four, and we'll just do four and four for now. Actually, five hives, and then will set rock pots onto a repeating cycle. Because we're going to need a lot of rock pots anyways. And there we go. Now we've set up a queue. Uh, next time that we come through here, we're going to be able to take a look at that. Oh, let's clean up this here. We no longer need that still. It's no longer necessary. seven idle dwarves that could be doing jobs, but that's okay for now. We'll get to them in a bit. Haven't quite gotten my big storeroom set up yet, but that's okay. We'll get to that too in probably the next video. Actually, yes, definitely in the next video, but also in the next video, we're going to do bedrooms. Because dwarves like places to sleep that don't involve being right next to workshops and being, you know, in a major traffic hub. They want their own bedrooms. And who could blame them? Alright, so that's going to, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, anything you want to see right away, anything uh, that you think I could be changing a little bit, I'm always open to suggestions, but uh, y'all have yourselves a very good night. I'm going to pause here and exit. Y'all have a good one.